way. And then the controls themselves. Them. But that these controls you'll never just wave my alone around randomly. The There's no the point to this. If there were like 20 mini games, sure. There are only five. It's, five. it's better than Ultimate Duck. I'm proud of this being the There's so many playable characters. I can just really be proud of it. What's the point of any of that if I can only play as these guys? This game encompasses so much of what I despise about poor quality mini game collections. Guys, it's not that bad. Just hear me out. For those who don't know, Pirate's Hunt for Blackbeard's Booty is an exclusive to Wii minigame collection. You traverse three different areas playing minigames in each location, all while collecting gold you can spend on unlocking skins for items in the games. Now DJ, you might ask, what are these games? Aye, that's done. Definitely one of the weaker games on the roster is sword fighting, a one-on-one -on -one fencing match between you and an opponent. There are three different kinds of attacks, the powerful attack, standard attack, and quick attacks. Each is performed by doing a different motion with a Wii remote, but honestly it's not great at registering what action was performed, so every fight just kind of devolves into flinging the Wii remote around and hoping for the best. There are other mechanics, like blocking and fatigue, but who cares about those anyway? Seven-year-old DJ didn't for sure. Also, I think it's funny that they misspelled Wii Remote in the manual. They wrote Wii Remove. Like, seriously, did no one catch this? Line! <laughs> row, row, row for your life is an aptly named minigame in which you and your teammate race against your opponent to outrun the Kraken. One teammate plays as the rower, whose job basically boils down to doing this. Yeah! While the other teammate is the gunner trying to shoot the opponents to slow them down, or shooting treasure chests to earn a little extra gold. Each time you cross one of these line things, the rower and the gunner switch jobs, adding a little chaos. For the first couple of rounds or so, this minigame is great! It's exhilarating trying to outrun your impending doom while switching between rowing and shooting. It keeps you on your toes. Sure, the controls aren't great, but that just kind of adds the excitement and tension. <sighs> However, after the initial couple of playthroughs, Row, row, row for your life really loses its luster. It's just too easy. The CPUs have no chance against you and a friend. If your gunner's any good, the CPUs will just get captured by the crack in every couple of seconds. And player versus player is no good either, because that just means you're paired up with some loser CPU who can't row or shoot to save their life. <laughs> Easily the most shallow and frustrating game of the bunch is Winds of the Wavy Sea. You move your boat around trying to collect these treasure chests that randomly spawn. But, to control your boat, you have to use the Wii Remote's pointer, which acts as wind blowing into your sails, pushing them forward. If that sounds confusing, it's because it is. The controls are so unwieldy, it's impossible for me to get any treasure chests. And if I do, it's by sheer luck. Meanwhile, the CPUs are cleaning house because they don't have to deal with the garbage controls. Playing with fire, you scrubs! In Treasure Hunters, you explore a little maze trying to collect treasure chests. The closer you are to a buried treasure chest, the larger the icon is, and the more your controller rumbles. Dig up the treasure and slowly and painstakingly deliver it back to your safe zone to get a point. But there's a catch. The other team is playing as the treasure defenders, whose goal is, you guessed it, defend the treasure. Basically, they walk around and try to bonk you on the head. If you and your teammate get bonked, you switch roles with the other team. Rinse and repeat until the time's up. The team with the most treasure wins. I don't know, there's just not much to say about this game. It's okay, but I mean, it's not like I'm running to my dad to tell him I beat Ralph and Mojo in Treasure Hunters. At the same time, it doesn't make me want to throw my Wii in a blender, like some other mini games. At this point, I bet you're wondering, well, DJ, didn't you say you liked this game? But for the whole time, all you've been doing is whining about it. But now, now it's time. It's time for the only saving grace this game has to offer. The oasis in a blistering desert of mediocrity. The only reason I still own this game to date. Squid Ball. Squid Ball is a game similar to Croquet, where your goal is to hit your ball, or in this case your squid, through the arches. If at any point in the game your squid hits another person's squid, you get to sabotage them. 
You fire their squid out of a cannon in any direction. But my favorite part of the game comes right at the end. Once you reach the final post, your squid becomes a poisonous squid. And your objective becomes, kill all the other squids. And if you do, you win. What a fun concept, man. As soon as someone becomes a poisonous squid, the whole strategy of the game changes. Your first goal was to get to the end as fast as possible, but now you have to navigate the arches while dodging the poisonous squid. If you have a worthy opponent, this game can be so strategic and deep. It sounds ridiculous to be praising a game called Squidball for its nuanced gameplay, but hey, when it's good, it's good. Pirates Hunt for Blackbeard's booty definitely has its flaws, but there's some great fun to be had. Throughout this whole review, I never even mentioned the customizable characters or items. Just look at this character roster, why are there so many? And I know most of my opinions are purely influenced by my nostalgia for this game, but it's not like the game is taking itself too seriously. In the end, it's just a fun time with the boys. <laughs> and besides, it's not like it's 30, 